JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's daily market review for May the 18th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's mini market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar was found lower against all the other digital currencies in the early European morning Tuesday. It underperformed the most versus CAD, GBP and Aussie, while it lost the least ground versus CHF and NOC. The weakening of the US dollar and the strengthening of the commodity linked to Luni and Aussie suggest that markets traded in a risk off fashion yesterday and today in Asia. However, looking at the, performa at the performance in the equity world, we see that EU indices were mixed, while all three of Wall Street's main indices finished lower, with Nasdaq losing the most ground. Market sentiment improved only during the Asian session today. Yesterday, investors uh, stayed reluctant uh, to add to their risk exposure, perhaps as the Empire State Manufacturing Survey showed that uh, prices paid rose to a record with uh, the respective index hint hitting 83.5, the highest since the data series began in 2001. Following last week's uh, largest uh, than expected surge in both the headline and core US CPIs for April, th this may have added to speculation that the Fed may indeed uh, need to consider withdrawing some policy support soon. However, overnight, Dallas Fed President Robert Kaplan said that he does not expect interest rates to rise until next year, reassuring markets that he and his colleagues will not tighten early. With that in mind, today investors may pay extra attention to remarks by Atlanta Fed President Rafael Bostic. Just after the CPI's surprise to the upside last week, Bostic appeared a bit skeptical, noting that it's too early to judge whether the inflation trend is worrisome, avoiding to say confidently that the search is due to transitory factors. Thus, it remains to be seen whether he will reiterate that view or whether he will also appear reassuring that it is not the time to start discussing por policy normalization yet. Taking all this into, into account, we stick to our guns that where financial markets may be headed next is likely to depend on what other Fed officials have to say moving forward. If uh, more of them appear a bit skeptical following last week's inflation data, the stock market is likely to pull back again while the US dollar may rebound. On the other hand, if the consensus among them is still that, uh, that the inflation spike will prove to be temporary and that it is still too early to start uh, discussing withdrawing policy support, risk appetite is likely to improve. Equities and other risk-linked uh, risk assets are likely to edge further north, while the US dollar and other safe havens are likely to come under renewed selling interest. Overnight, we also got the minutes uh, from the latest RBA policy gathering, with the report confirming officials' concerns over inflation. According to the minutes, officials believe that wages would need to expand sustainably above 3% to generate inflation. Now, with wage growth currently running at just 1.4% and expected to stay there tonight when the data for the first quarter is due out, uh, this underscores how long interest rates could remain near zero and that the chances for more bond purchases at the July meeting uh, are very high. Now, the British pound was the second winner in line among the G10s, with its traders now locking their gaze on tomorrow's CPI data due out during the early European morning. The headline rate is forecast to have doubled to 1.4% year-over-year from 0.7%, 
while the core one is anticipated to have ticked up to 1.2% year over year from 1.1%. At its prior meeting, the Bank of England decided to scale back uh, the, the pace of its bond purchases, although it added that the monetary policy remains accommodative. Despite officials noting that any spike in inflation is likely to prove to be temporary, combined with last week's better than expected GDP, industrial production, and manufacturing production data, this may add more credence to the bank's decision and may help the pound gain further, especially if uh, Friday's retail sales for April are also on the decent side. Now, as for today's events, during the European session, we get Eurozone's second GDP estimate for the first quarter, which is expected to confirm the initial print of minus 0.6% quarter over quarter, as well as the bloc's employment change for the quarter, for which no forecast is currently available. Later in the day, from the US, we have the building permits and housing starts, both for April. Building permits are expected to have increased somewhat, but housing starts are forecast to have slightly declined. As for the speakers, Apart from Atlanta Fed President Rafael Bostic, we will also get to hear from uh, SNB President Thomas Jordan. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day. And I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.